welcome to the Profitable Podcasting 5-Day Intensive, how to build your reach, your reputation, and your revenue with a podcast. Brought to you by Podcasting with Purpose, Stand Out, Be Heard, Influence. Now, on to today's session. Hey everyone, this is Anne-Marie Cross and welcome to the very first session of the Profitable Podcasting 5-Day Intensive. Now, one of the things that I've decided to do is just for this session alone is to stream it live across multiple platforms, including my Instagram. So this is the first time I've actually done it Instagram, but... Uh, why not? Let's just give it a go. Let's just jump in the deep end. The reason being is that there's a number of people who have not yet heard about this intensive and I really want them to uh, to hear the information that I'm going to share today and obviously in the next couple of days, particularly if they are experts in their field and they know that to share their message in a much bigger way means they're going to influence and impact so many more people as well, of course, as build their business, build their revenue with the right systems in place. So do me a favor, if you will, and uh, just let me know where you are coming in from or calling in from, listening in from, even if you are watching the replay. Just do hashtag replay and let me know. Now, I'm using the platform StreamYard. If you haven't already uh, allowed them access to your system, the reason you do that is because then I can see your name. If you haven't allowed them access, then all I see is Facebook user. I don't actually see your name. That's one of the reasons, um, the benefits of that. But that's okay. I will go back into the private group and uh, we'll certainly be able to see then who is leaving messages and uh, be able to catch up. So we've got someone from ringing in or calling in and listening from Kingston, Jamaica, from Surrey, UK, Washington State, USA. We are an international. Topeka, KS? Uh, I'm not sure where that is. Is that Kansas? Kansas, Topeka. I hope I've pronounce that correctly. Cleveland, Ohio. Wow, amazing, amazing. Welcome. Welcome. Today's session is Common Podcasting Mistakes and This Truths. That'll stop you from building your reach, your reputation, and your revenue. How do I know? Because I made all of these uh, mistakes. Before we jump into the content, there's a couple of announcements that I want to share. Firstly, I know there's a number of you who have been commenting, tell me the code word, tell me the code word. I will be sharing what the code word is uh, a little bit later on in today's session. Um, but firstly, I just wanted to do a shout out to uh, someone in the community here, we've been having some great catch-ups, some great conversations. Welcome if you're joining from Instagram. It's good to have you here. Um, Michael Chrisa asked a great, great question. He said, he asked me, when you're talking about podcasting, are you talking about videos? Are you talking about live streaming? And I responded, I'm talking about all of those things, all of those things. However, for many of you who are here today, you may not have already started a podcast. You may be hearing that podcasting is certainly something that many more businesses are, are getting into, which is fantastic. But I want to read what I said, just in case you um, haven't had an opportunity to to scroll down the introduce yourself, let us know where you're from. And if you've already launched a podcast, I know that I've got a couple of people here who are themselves people who train other podcasters. Welcome. I think podcasting is, we're still on the cusp. You know, when you compare what podcasting or where podcasting is in comparison to blogs and, you know, um, social media and videos, if you look at YouTube, podcasting is still relatively new. And one of the things that I'm a great believer, there is no competition. So if you are here today and you're, you're concerned that if you launch a podcast or you have launched a podcast already and there's so much competition, guess what? You can eliminate that from your mind because there is only one you. There is only one you um, with the stories that you can share, the challenges that you've overcome. And as we know, when you overcome challenges, you, you build insights and learnings that only you can bring to share with other people. So there's no such thing as competition. Uh, collaboration is the new competition. That's something that I heard. But this is what I said to, um, to Michael. And let me just remove this banner. You know now uh, what this session is. There we go. So I said, you know, for many people in this community, uh, Michael, 
they're newbies. They'll probably start out with audio podcasts. However, podcasting can be video as well. In fact, my team and I, I've been streaming live my podcast interviews since 2018. I'm nowhere near. Uh, I know someone in this group is uh, a, a live streaming veteran, has been pod, um, you know, streaming for, for quite some time. But I've been live streaming all of my podcast interviews as a way to really build reach and get the message out there to so many more people. Um, you know, the technology that we have at our fingertips today is just incredible. It's incredible, but it's also can be a barrier because many of you might be thinking, oh, I don't know anything about podcasting technology, uh, microphones, all of that stuff. What do I get? What do I need to use? All of that kind of thing. But this is one of the things that I'm passionate about teaching. You know, it's your message and it's your monetization strategy before you worry about the make and model of the microphone. Something else that I want to just blow out of um, your, if you're worried and concerned about it, do not get worried or concerned about vanity, you know, vanity metrics. Um, you know, you can build a successful business, you can build reach, and you can build your reputation with a small niche audience. So, you know, whilst it's lovely to be, um, you know, to be listed in the top this and the top that, uh, if you're not listed in the top this and top that, don't think that that's your failure because what I'm going to teach you today is to enable you to leverage your podcast. A podcast is a medium for you to build interaction with your ideal clients and then begin to build know, like and trust. And then, of course, uh, for those who are ready to make a move to, to take that next step, when you invite them at the right time with the right content, with the right information, that is when... Uh, that person will say, yep, I want to find out more. So that's what I'm all about. Um, it's nice to be listed among the top this and the top that. My Ambitious Entrepreneur Show was an award-winning podcast, was often listed and written in the top this and this article. I stopped production of that last year because I realized that the focus were in the niche where I was heading, the Ambitious Entrepreneur Show, whilst that had served me well, whilst that had built up an incredible audience, um, I realized that I had outgrown that. So all right, I'm seeing lots of welcomes and where you're coming in from. Keep that going. Let's dive in uh, to today's topic. Before I do, let me just share with you that competition and what we're going to do with that. What I did last time we ran this intensive, there was a lot of people who were thinking, goodness, I see how strategy is so important. And we can often get stuck in our own minds, can't we? So at the end of this week, uh, next week, this, this is just the beginning. You're on this journey for a couple of weeks where we're going to be going, I'm going to be going live. But next week, two of you will be going live in the hot seat spotlight coaching. It's going to be a valuable opportunity and fun. Fun is one of my key, uh, you know, key values. If it's not fun, why would you do it? Okay, so all you need to do to go into the running where you and I will brainstorm some ideas. You may already have a podcast, that's fine. You may have an idea for a particular podcast, but you're not sure, you know, about the message, maybe even the name of the podcast, um, what you should be focusing on as far as when you're looking at nurturing listeners into leads, what's the best way for you to, to you know, build that pipeline, anything and all of those things. Obviously, we'll have 30 minutes to do that. Now, to be in the running, there's a number of things that you need to do. Firstly, show up. So whether you're showing up live or you're showing up um, in the replay, that is fine. Every single day and every single session, I will announce one code word. And I'll let you know when the code word is there. So that all you need to do is write that down somewhere. And when the session has finished, go ahead and DM me what that is. Don't share this on an open forum here because um, you want other people to enhance their learning by also listening and watching what we're talking about. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'd love you to do is underneath each video, and I will be posting a link to each video in the units. You would have seen that my team and I have already created some units here in the Facebook group, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, and Periscope. And outside my Facebook page, you need to get to podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash intensive and the Facebook community. This is where it's all happening. We've got awesome people here. Janine, amazing opportunity. Thank you. There are amazing opportunities to build relationships with these incredible people who are here in this community. This is a community of change makers, 
thought leaders and aspiring thought leaders who are impacting the world with their message and who really want to take 2020 and take what they're doing to the next level. So you need to get in that community. Go to podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash intensive to do that. Um, then also what I want you to do is underneath the video of each session, what's the biggest aha that you've had? Maybe there's been a shift in thinking. Maybe you've, you've realised, oh, okay, I've been doing this in incorrectly and you know what? I celebrate all of the things that I've learned, the mistakes that I've made because um, then I can do better because I can choose better. I can take different actions. I can be consistent in a focused way. Um, so I want you to, to take that approach too. So what's the one aha? And then if you want a bonus points, take a photo, a selfie. I hate selfies, but anyway, we'll have to get over ourselves, don't we? Take a selfie of you with your workbook or listening to the pod of this, you know, live stream and share it on the uh, on any of the favourite social media platforms that you have. Yes, Scott, I will be sharing what that is. So uh, a little bit later on in today's session. So that's all you need to do. So it's pretty simple. Keep an ear out for the code word. DM me what that is write the biggest aha, and I'll be monitoring all of those, and I'll even be coming back into the group to, um, you know, celebrating alongside you with those ahas, and then if you really want to take it to the next level, um, take an image, a selfie of you in the workbook or, or watching the video and share it across, and remember to tag me across the social platforms. I've already written what my platforms are in the post on the Facebook group, which is why you want to get into the Facebook group. Uh, because as I said, you never know your next joint venture partner, your next client, your next potential podcast guest opportunity or even guest expert is uh, in this community. I guarantee it. All right. So I'm hoping that you have printed out the workbook. If you haven't, that is OK. You can do that when we finish um, and then watch the replay and take down the notes. You know, often when I'm going through any training, I'll listen to it um, a couple of times and every time you pick up a different aha, don't you, a different insight, because you're seeing it through a different or new lens of understanding and new appreciation. And so don't be, um, don't be um, hesitant to, to go and listen to this again and again. All right, so when we're talking about standing out, building your reach and building your rep reputation, particularly as you know, an expert in your field, we know that things have changed, haven't they? When, when I'm talking about things, the marketplace, we have so much more technology now at our fingertips, which is fantastic. However, for many of us who are service-based businesses and we can share our expertise and make a di difference in the world with our message and our expertise, our services, our programs, our products, means that we've opened ourselves up to an international marketplace, which is the good thing. The other thing, of course, is that we're also, uh, our message is being shared amongst many other people who are also in, in our fields. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing, because remember I said to you earlier, there's no such thing as competition. There's only one you. There is only one you. However, if your ideal client who can do the best work possible with you because of your approach, because of your style, because of only what you bring to the table, if they're not hearing your message, if they're not seeing, if they're not reading because your message is getting lost amongst the clutter and there is so much clutter, then guess what? You do not have the opportunity then to support that person. And that's, I don't want that to happen to you. And so there was an interesting study, Edelman and LinkedIn in 2019, the B2B Thought Leadership Impact Study. So take down the notes in your workbook here. They said that 87% of decision makers said that building thought leadership, it builds trust. It builds trust. And if you've kept um, an, an eye or an ear out on the Edelman Trust Barometer, which is done every single year, and I do because it's, um, it's an interesting study, they were saying that the gap between informed community and uninformed community, so the mass people, the com mass community out there, the biggest gap of trust was ever um, identified, and I believe it was around 16 points, which meant that if you continue to build your reach with content, whether it's podcast, whether it's live streaming, whether it's video, and, you know, podcast has its benefits. We'll certainly talk about that throughout the, the next few days together. When you start to do that, you build that trust. You build that no like, and trust. 
You're building a relationship every single time that you share a podcast episode, whether you are sharing your insights on your own show, a solo show, or whether you're interviewing a guest and therefore showcasing someone else's expertise, but adding value to your community. And both have its benefits um, for sure. 89%, which is the next point you want to write down, of decision makers said that building thought leadership it enhances your reputation. It enhances your reputation. And if a number of you are thinking, yeah, but I haven't really thought of myself as leading my industry or, or sharing my thoughts in a way that I'm becoming that authority, that thought leader, you know something that is valuable, as I've mentioned, through your experience, through the certifications. And I think, um, you know, through challenges that you have overcome and systems that you have identified, shortcuts, you know, those things are priceless because I'm sure that through your experience and insights as you share them with your ideal client, you're going to save them time, you're going to save them heartache, and there's real value in that. You know, I, I heard, and I'll, I'll share it briefly, and I'm sure you've heard similar metaphors and stories where there was a mechanic and someone went in with his car, it wasn't working properly, the mechanic kind of turned it on and revved it up a little bit, listened, mm, you know, went around, the bonnet was open, took a, um, I know, a, a, a tool and knocked it somewhere and all of a sudden the car uh, started working and he gave the price, said that'll be whatever it was, and the client went, but you were only working on the on there for five or ten minutes. How could it be that expensive? He said, yeah, I know, but it took me that many years to learn exactly where to change and where to hit. That's the value that you are offering your clients. And so often we negate that because as we're growing our expertise, we forget where our ideal client is. And so we can fast track that with far more efficiency, less heartache, so they can achieve the goals that they want to achieve far quicker through our expertise. That's the kind of content that you want to continue to share on your podcast and other uh, communication preferences as you're sharing your content. Now, 58% of decision makers said that they would choose a business because of their thought leadership. This is another statistic which I'm hoping validates um, your thinking around it really is worth my while taking some time to understand where do I want to become known is that expert, that thought leader in. And this one is really interesting. 61% of decision makers said that they're willing to pay premium prices to work with a brand, a brand, you are a brand, whether you know it or not, that articulates a clear vision through thought leadership. So imagine if you are putting a podcast show together and all of it, you haven't got a clear um, idea, your, your you know, title is confusing, your podcast title. So when they go to some of the key podcast players, you know, Spotify is one that I'm hearing is, is really taking off and they read your podcast uh, graphic and next they keep scrolling or your podcast title or the guests that you have, or the information you share. If it's not niched and not targeted, you're going to lose um, the ability to really build momentum as you being that key authority, that key sought after person in your industry. And that's what I do not want for you to happen. So the benefits, as it's mentioned in the workbook, it builds trust, it builds your reputation, you become the chosen person, and you can charge premium prices because you're building thought leadership. And you continue to, to share that consistently each and every time you launch an episode. So here are some podcasting mistakes that will stop you from being seen as that thought leader. Now, these are only seven mistakes. There are others, of course, as well. There are, you know, logistical things and things like that. But this is from a point of view of really building a solid platform that you can build that thought leadership. When you're thinking about marketing your business, um, podcasting is just one way that you can build your profile, build your reach. So I'm sharing this in the hope that this information is also not only going to inform you as you move forward with your podcast, or maybe make some tweaks if you've already got a podcast, but also inform you across other ways as well. If you're a speaker, if you are an author, if you are um, a consultant, and it was interesting, I was just talking to a colleague of mine who's known me for a number of years, and she said, you know, I've seen you pivot from, you know, a brand, personal branding. I was in the career industry for many, many years. Um, and in actual fact, that's a question I'm often asked. How did you start your podcast? Why did you start your podcast? Thank you. I, I'm hoping that, yes, this is great information over on Insta. 
Um, and I was in the career industry. And back in 2008, that was when I first started my co-hosted podcast. For those of you that were around at that time, you would have re recalled that that was when the global financial crisis hit. And every single media platform from print, radio, television was talking about the doom and gloom, about the new, you know, numerous people who found themselves unemployed, the, you know, the desperation. And a colleague and I said, we are tired of this doom and gloom. We could see that it was impacting the psyche of our ideal customer. Some of our clients already was, was really despondent and it was impacting how they showed up at their job interviews. We knew that things were things were um, different. They certainly were different and jobs were no longer advertised. I had accountants. I was coaching for um, a no well-known at the time job board in the US. And it was heartbreaking to hear of these management accountants who had high, you know, paying jobs, try and go and apply for bookkeeping and admin roles, which were paying, you know, significantly less. So we said we needed to be the voice of hope and inspiration. And that's what we did. We started a podcast back then. It wasn't even called a podcast because podcasting wasn't really a thing then. It was online radio through Blog Talk Radio platform, and we did that for two years. We made impact and we made influence, but we struggled to generate income, which is, we, and so we only did that for two years and we stopped. So I don't want that to happen to you. There's a term for that now called pod fade. So I don't want you to have to give up your podcast because you haven't been able to monetize that. I've made all of the mistakes and then some, which is why I'm sharing that with you today so that you can avoid them and ensure from the very first episode that you've got a system, you've got a process that will add incredible value. It's all about adding value to your community. But then there's this, this nice call to action for people who are ready to make that decision because they're at the stage in their, in their life, their business, their career, for them to say, yep, now I want to make that that next step. And so those are the things that I'll be talking about. But today, mistake number one, you may have already guessed what it is, fill in the gaps in your workbook. Number one is no clear strategy or incorrect strategy for a service based business. Now, I know for some of you, you are, um, you are organizations that are not for profits. So you may not be generating revenue from a profit perspective, but rather be raising awareness for your cause. And the revenue we talk about are sponsorships. The revenue we talk about are perhaps some advertising packages or, you know, or, or uh, people who get behind your organization because they're passionate about the impact that you are making. So when I talk about revenue, it, it, it is around income coming in to support your business, to support you, to support causes. So that's what I'm talking about. And so either a clear strategy or it's an incorrect strategy. When we think about the number of businesses that are out there, the number of messages that we are constantly being bombarded with, I remember the Ambitious Entrepreneur Show, which I mentioned, I had a sponsor. Now, I talk, I talk about sponsorship, internal sponsors and external sponsors. An external sponsor is an outsider who's going to give you money to promote their brand, whether it's a product or a service, to your community, to your listenership, to your audience. And um, over the years, the Ambitious Entrepreneur Show, I had a couple of sponsors, but then over the years with my other podcasts, I decided I wasn't going to have external sponsors and I've turned away hundreds if not thousands of people that have contacted us on the podcast network and said, we want to sponsor some shows, tell us we're not interested. But one particular person that we did decide to invite on the Ambitious Entrepreneur as a sponsor was Meredith Elliott, Elliott Powell. And she talked about back then, this was a number of years ago, uh, around building trust in the economy, a trust economy, she would call it. She was saying back then even that the amount of touch points, and a touch point is every time someone hears, reads, you share a quote, whatever it is, they interact with you somehow. It can even be through your email you know, system and your follow-up that way news that every single touch point builds that know, like, and trust. And whereas previously you may have only had to have a number of different touch points, and she was saying about seven to ten, that's several years ago now, seven to ten, ten touch points that people needed to hear, see, experience your content 
before they would make a decision. She also said back then that in a difficult economy, in a tight economy, in a competitive economy, uh, and for some of you, you are in a competitive uh, you know, economy. We, when we think about um, some of the things happening on a global scale here in Australia, um, whole industries have stopped overnight because of things that have happened and have stopped their revenue. Their revenue stream has dried up. And so, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And so sometimes that means that in some industries, we need to double down on our content. But the beautiful thing about a podcast and a solid content strategy is that there is content constantly being shared by you. And even if you need to double that 7 to 12 and make it 14 to, you know, 24, whatever it is, you've got a solid strategy that enables you to continue building that content, sharing it, and then nurturing your, you know, those people who are your ideal clients into your community. So I hope that makes sense. So the correct strategy for a business owner is to map out their customer journey, to know exactly the kind of trigger points, the kind of concerns that your ideal client has, uh, all of those things and more, and then be able to share content in a way that addresses that answers, that gives your ideal client an aha to go, oh, I never thought of it that way. That's why I'm struggling. And so then the call to action that you share at the end of that podcast episode becomes so compelling because you've shared something that they've never thought about. Well, the way that you've shared it has them thinking differently. I hope that makes sense. So the right strategy. Mistake number two, failing to identify a niche. And I'm going to take that even further by saying a lucrative niche. Here in Haiti, sponsorship is hard for podcasters to be found, absolutely. As I said, external sponsors, not a great idea. Internal sponsorship, that's a whole other story. And everything that I'm sharing today and also in the next few days talks about building an opportunity for you to have an internal sponsor. And I'll share a little bit more in upcoming sessions. Okay, so a lucrative niche. You may have an ideal customer, and thank you someone there for who's sharing those um, key points. Um, you might have an ideal customer who you've recognised as someone who needs your services, someone who is struggling and someone who really could benefit from your expertise in, in helping them overcome that challenge. But you also might have an ideal customer or niche that doesn't necessarily invest because of the situation that they're in or just because of that industry. Now, an example that I'll use from many years ago, and I'm not sure whether that's still the case, um, but it was back then, is that, you know, I've spoken to a number of business owners who wanted to work with teachers, especially in the US. You know, teaching is such an incredible incredible industry to be in, you know, you impact the lives of the future generation. I mean, how how good does that get to be able to sow some seeds um, and nuggets that can, you know, help nurture that young child and to them becoming an influential voice um, in whatever industry or role that they decide or business that they decide to open. Yet I know that it's quite challenging in some in industry, you know, in some countries because of funding, lack of funding. Here in Australia, thankfully, um, the, the government, and I don't want to get into politics, so don't message me or anything, but, you know, some industries, or that industry in the US was quite difficult. And what a lot of the teachers would do, rather than invest in themselves to get coaching and support, they would much rather go out and buy stationery and supplies for the kids. I mean, how honourable honourable is that? So there wasn't really that extra funds for them to be able to invest. So you need to ask yourself... You know, and that's one of the things that I'll, I'll, I'll say when we're mapping out a podcast, you know, monetization strategy with a client. Who's your ideal client? And maybe for some of you, your ideal client's, you know, journey, um, buyer's journey is longer. And that's okay because you've already got quite a solid pipeline of business that you, that you are working with, um, but your contracts are a lot more lucrative too. And so those factors all are supposed, you know, are great to consider as you're developing your strategy. But for some of you, if you don't have that length of time, if you don't have the finances or the funds to be able to support you in, um, you know, nurturing that niche, then then you need to think of what is a corner of that niche that I can perhaps tap into because they are investing a lot more quicker. Um, you don't want to convince your ideal client 
that they need to, to, to invest in your services. If there's too much convincing to do, unless, of course, as I said, you've got the funds to do that, you might end up um, investing all of your money and trying to convince them and you don't want that. Mistake number three, that is when you're unclear on your thought leader brand and your message. And look, I can put my hand up for that because I am who previously what I would call a multi-talented, passionate entrepreneur. I love new, you know, creative projects. I love learning, learning new technology. If I find out a new technology, I'll, I dive in because I want to figure out how I can use it so I can teach it to my clients and bring it that way. Um, and so, you know, for, for years, I would be doing different things, sharing different things. And then people would be saying to me, what are you doing today? What, you know, what interesting things are you doing today? And so for me, I really needed to take a step back and have been able to do so. Now we sit under the umbrella of, you know, the reach, the reputation and revenue of the podcast, really positioning myself as um, that podcast. And, you know, for those of you who've heard me announce myself or call myself the podcasting queen, that is not a name I gave myself. And in actual fact, it validates what I'm talking about here in mistake number three. When you get so clear on where you want to start positioning yourself and it aligns with your gifts and talents. You know, I love interviewing people because I'm naturally curious. And so sometimes when I'm with someone, I am also an introvert. So, um, you know, every now and again, if I'm out, out, you know, networking or peopling, as I call it, I pretend that I put a, an invisible microphone in front of me and I'll start asking questions. And then we dive deeper and all of a sudden I've got to go, oh, I'm sorry, I've got a podcasting hat on today. But I'm curious. I love to find out about people's works, you know, what's going on for them, all that kind of thing. And so people recognize that. And they started to call me the podcasting queen. And, and initially I laughed it off and I thought, yeah, whatever. But, you know, a few colleagues said, look, there's something in that you really need to consider. And so, you know, a number of years ago, I embraced that title. But um, so for you, when you get clear on your message, you, you really start to get clear on where you want to position yourself. And you do that constantly over and over again because you're passionate about what you're doing anyway. Your audience will notice, your community will notice. So be mindful about what you are uh, you know, what you're hearing your community say, because if you're stuck in that, you most likely will be getting some some evidence, some insights from the community who are, are already uh, following you and like your content. So mistake number four is broad range of unrelated topics or guests. Now, this is what happened to me too in the Ambitious Entrepreneur Show in that, you know, I was, uh, I mean, I, I did try and tailor it to so that each particular con, you know, content that was being shared was a value to my audience in one way or another. But what I'm finding is that if you're not clear and you don't position that in your introduction and you don't um, ask tailored questions that really put, help the guests to share content in the right way, you can be all over the place. And so be mindful of the guests. How do they add value to your particular area um, of expertise? For me now, I started Industry Thought Leader podcast. Um, I wrote, it would be now last year, I wrote and published the um, Industry Thought Leader book, How to Go from Invisible to Influential and Profitable with a Podcast, and slowly been really building that Industry Thought Leader brand because that's really what I want to help people to do is to build that thought leadership. So the people that I have on that show are either thought leaders themselves or they've got a product or a service or a program or some form of expertise that's going to add value to my audience who are all building their thought leadership. And so I'm very mindful about who I invite on the show and very clear about um, the requirements. And so often, you know, be mindful about who you invite on the show to make sure that they really can add value to the conversation that you want to become known as that expert in. Mistake number five is off-brand podcast creatives. What do I mean by that? Well, from your graphic to your introduction music, um, the sound effects, if you're going to have sound effects in your podcast, right through to the voiceover professional, all of that creates your, um, you know, your, so I missed number three. Okay, number three, I'm going to go back and share. Unclear on their thought, your thought leadership brand and your message. But this one is the mistake number five, um, off-brand creatives and podcast creatives. Um, you know, if you think about your music, 
Um, every single piece of music, you, you imagine if you close your eyes and you're listening to music, it creates an experience, doesn't it? It either starts very bold or it starts off, you know, with almost this curiosity. I mean, you only close your eyes and uh, the mu music that you listen to will take you on a journey. I mean, if you think of movies, these scary movies, you know, Jaws, actually, let's use that as an example. Um, somewhere on Facebook, someone said that they went out swimming um, with a group of a community. And you know what the cheeky um, cheeky uh, organisers of, the, of the, the, um, the event did? They played the Jaws music. Dung, 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 dung. And she said she freaked out in the water. I mean, who does that? that that's quite funny, not funny. Um, but that the music can bring up an emotion in you. And that's what I'm talking about on brand creatives. You know, I listened to a podcast a while ago and it was, an, it was supposed to be an Aussie focused podcast, but for business owners. And it had um, music that incorporated a didgeridoo. Not, not that there was anything wrong with that, but the music was so slow. And then the voiceover professional came on and it was just really off brand. And then the, the, the two hosts, they bantered. And by the time it was like five minutes into the podcast episode, uh, I knew that uh, I lost attention and I'm sure many uh, of their listeners did too. And their podcast wasn't, wasn't uh, produced much longer, sadly. Um, I just listened recently to one of my clients who's all about um, time, all about falling in love with your time again. And she's got incredible archetypes, time archetypes. And of course, so her ideal client is incredibly busy and stressed and overwhelmed anyway. So the, the 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 music she created was light, it was airy, it was fun, it pulled you in. And the way she speaks, it's just to the point, on topic, valuable content so that her, her uh, listener can go off and then can get into action. And so these things make an incredible difference. So have a look at your, your brand values what do you stand for? What experience do you want to create? If you're not sure, that's an indication that you want to spend time in, in, in identifying that. But then if you are clear on the experience you want to create, when you listen to the music, when you listen to your voiceover professional, and, and maybe you are going to do your own voiceover, is the, the pace of your communication, is your tone, is that all adding value? to how you are creating that initial introduction to you when someone first listens to that. It all needs to be on brand and, and aligned with those core values, those core brand values. Hope that helps. So mistake number six, uninspiring show and episode introductions. Now, I have to be honest and say that I don't listen to radio and I don't really watch too much TV with ads. I just block block out. I think there's a term for that, isn't it? Ad block or something where your mind goes elsewhere, but you just ignore all ads. And so for me, what, what happens when I'm listening to the radio, not only do I turn off with ads, but I also turn off with banter. You know, and, and look, I know that some people love listening to the banter. If you've got a favorite host, you love that. But again, it depends on who your audience is. If you're a business owner or a leader and you you know your ideal clients are other business owners and leaders and their time is limited, you want to make sure that what you give them and particularly what you tell them that you're going to give them is on point. It's concise. You don't want to really have too much banter. Just the other day, someone reached out on LinkedIn and she said to me, I found your podcast on Stitcher. She said, I just wanted to reach out and connect with you and say thank you well done she said yours is one of the few that gets straight to the point and gives valuable information without all the fluff and banter I know my ideal client they haven't got time to um to listen to you know me raving on about um insignificant things which don't really add value to them being able to become known as that thought leader so you need to know who your ideal client is as well and ensure that uh, your introductions lets people know the value and the insights they're going to learn from your podcast episode. Something else that I want to talk about in, in that too is that, you know, depending, of course, I talked about your customer journey, you also need to consider as part of that strategy where and how you're using your podcast. And what I mean by that is 
Now, are you using your podcast? I mean, obviously for external, for new people that may um, not have had an opportunity to learn about you. Or maybe for some of you, and I know some of my clients are very much using their podcast as part of their retention strategy for their customers. They know that, you know, their particular customer will often need to renew their service or or there is, you know, renewal. And therefore, they want to build that, you know, that retainment with that particular client. And so their customers already know them, but their particular podcast is going to be used to help retain, help um, allow those clients to know of other services and products or keep top of mind so that when a, a you know, renewal is available or required, they remain the top service provider in that area. So be mindful of that. And number seven, ineffective calls to action and uh, Simon says brand values are important plus clear definition of your audience yeah absolutely absolutely agree Simon so ineffective calls to action there are typical calls to action which are great you know if this is the first time that you're listening welcome I value your time um, would love if, if, if this podcast episode has made an impact would love you to leave a comment some feedback um, so that we can continue to, to deliver value. Um, it could be to subscribe. It could be to leave a comment. Um, it could be to share, you know, your podcast episode with someone. But as a thought leader, using your podcast as a way to nurture listeners into leads and ultimately paying customers, what, you, what we recommend you do, and this is a strategy that I do and what I now teach, is the call to action should be a resource that allows people who are ready to take that next step because you've taken them on this learning journey of insights, ahas, and, you know, like, wow, that was fantastic. That call to action should be that next step. And that next step, we're, we're encouraging people to develop the, the three-part uh, Thought Leader podcast series, a podcast series. Now, that, there's a couple of reasons behind that, and I'll share more in one of the upcoming sessions. But um, I've I've done some some you know studies or very informal ones where I've reached out to my audience, and I've also observed and asked and got feedback from this that people who listen to podcasts listen to podcasts because they haven't got time to watch long videos, they haven't got time to read ebooks, long ebooks or other material. They love listening. That's the preferred method of of learning and of, of um, you know, intaking information. And so a call to action at the end of a podcast to say, hey, sign up for my free ebook or sign up for my video series, it may just break rapport in the way that you're delivering content. And so that's why if from a podcast episode, and you can use this even if you're being interviewed on other people's podcasts, the call to action is sign up for my podcast series where you can listen to it, you know, and, and you can dive in deeper into that. And so a, a number of people have said, yeah, absolutely. You know, an example that I give was someone had a newsletter and was sending out a regular newsletter weekly and was told you need to do video, need to do video, video. And video is good. Every method of communication is good if you're using it in the right way and if your audience has that preference of, um, you know, taking information in that way. And so what he did was he started to no longer write in the newsletter but have a graphic which pointed to people out to a, a, um, to a, to a video and eventually he got an email from a number of people on the new newsletter list and said, mate, it was Australia, mate, we haven't got time to watch videos. That's why I subscribe to your email newsletter. Are you going to bring back the written form? Because if not, I am not going to, um, to, to, to listen. And so, Simon, great question here. Uh, let me just put this up here. Simon says, I'm going to go into some questions in a moment. Actually, nearly finished at the end of uh, this particular session, then open up. Call to action, ever try, ever trial and error, split testing or, or always proven call to actions from a proven test group? Yes, yes, and yes. So I have my podcast series now, which I have. Um, we have other, you know, we might have, uh, I've got a quiz. And are you ready to launch your Thought Leader podcast quiz that people can, can access? There is this intensive. So there's a number of things that I incorporate. But at the end of every podcast episode, I um, uh, I share in the outro 
the pay sign up. And actually, we've just changed that again, because what we're doing now is we've um, just launched this year Industry Thought Leader Academy, where we've got some free masterclasses and other good uh, courses for people to um, to be able to listen to and, and access. So someone said, where can I listen to your podcast? Industry Thought Leader Podcast, industrythoughtleaderpodcast.com industrythoughtleaderpodcast.com. What were the percentages for the Edelman Thought Leader Impact Study? Great, great question. So ask your questions now. We've pretty much finished for this particular session here. But let me go back and just, um, you can go back and watch the recording, but just for those people who may not have been able to write them down, write them down 87% is the first one, 89% reputation, 58%. Uh, decision makers would choose a business because of thought leadership and 61% of decision makers said that they were willing to um, to pay premium prices. Let's just do a, a recap. While you're thinking of questions, go and um, ask the questions. And what I'm going to do is just share with you what we covered. All right. So session one. So we talked about that build building your thought leadership enables you to build trust, to enhance your reputation, to influence your ideal customer to choose you, to get paid those premium prices. We talked about the common podcasting mistakes. So let's talk about that in the positive by what you want to start to do. You want to have a clear strategy. You want to get clear on your niche and a lucrative niche, a niche that is going to invest because they see the value that they're going to get to investing in you. Be clear on your thought leader brand and message. Select topics and guests that align with your thought leader message. Create on-brand podcast creatives so that you create that unique experience that only you can create. Have value-driven attention catching, you know, introductions. People come for the topic. They return for the host. They come for the topic they return for the host. What do I mean by that? Um, your topic and right at the beginning needs to be concise and give them a reason why, compelling reason why they should listen. As you are sharing your content, they're starting to understand you a little bit and get to know, like, and trust you. So therefore, um, you know, go ahead and, and do that. So someone said there's a typo in there. Great, great. Um, an effective course to action. Let me see, thought, probably is, probably is. There you go. And next session, um, let me see if we can change it to the next slide. Tomorrow's session, I'm going to be talking about the three podcast profit models. This is what I have created when I look back at what I started to do. And I'll share the story about where I accidentally made money from a podcast that I launched not because I wanted to launch to build my business, but because I wanted to, um, I just had my worst business failure and I wanted to go out and interview awesome business owners and leaders, women in business to help me in my journey of getting over that business failure. And I'll share the, uh, the, the story of how I accidentally made money from that three episodes in. So, okay, so that was the um the lessons there i hope you found that valuable are there any questions around um around what we talked about today let's have a look here i'm sorry your name hasn't come up but i love this comment love the idea of a podcast knowing what kind of learning styles your client uses is a huge way to deliver material for maximum understanding absolutely that's why you know if i think about my podcast series a three-part um, not only is it in a podcast, but it also is transcribed um, and it also has, you know, key points. You want to help your audience to consume that content, don't you? Um, Simon says, any thoughts on frequency, consistency, best time to publish and go live? Absolutely. Let me share you with you the one rule. Don't tell anyone else this, that I told you this. There's one rule when it comes to podcasting. Want to know what it is? that there are no rules when it comes to podcasting. The reason is, and I don't want to sound cheeky, but the reason is, is because the rules re re relate to your audience. It relates to you. It relates to um, how are you using your podcast in your business? I've got client, some clients who publish weekly. I've got some clients who publish fortnightly. I've got some clients who publish once a month. 
because it's part of their strategy. I've got other clients who have a three-part podcast series that they're using to build their reach, but then they've got a, an internal podcast where they're sharing that only with um their internal customers because it's really built but someone says here on um on instagram which is true consistency is the rule so if you say that you're going to publish weekly or fortnightly or you know monthly whatever it is you want to make sure that you publish that consistency i had a um i was on a podcast interview once and someone mentioned that they'd only just recently started their podcast and they changed the production date so the look you know the publish date from wednesday to thursday and someone emailed them and said hey podcast episode hasn't dropped this week what's going on I said oh i'm sorry we we you might not have got the newsletter we gave everyone the heads up that we're changing the um the publication that that's a great problem to have when you when you have uh, your audience reach out and say hey time to publish that where's the next episode that that's really what happens um let's see here's a question um one of my biggest fears is that i'll have to be podcasting constantly is it wise to to go on like a season break great great question here's a couple of things that i have um just off, off the top of my head depends again and i don't know who you know ob obviously how you're going to be using that or who you know who you are and what industry that you're in but some of the things that you can do is obviously pre-record and, and have things in advance other things just say you do seasons and what you might want to do so that you're if you're going on a bit of a break what you might do is have the team or even yourself grab some snippets of previous shows. So that means that whilst you're not actually in the, you know, the recording the studio recording, if it's you or with guests, you're replaying some of the, you know, some of the previous podcast episodes, particularly the ones that really, um, you know, went well, had, had a good listenership and, and feedback. So those are things that you need to, to consider too as you're going through through that. I'm not sure. Um, you know, specifically what you're doing as far as using that for strategy. But that's certainly an idea. But, you know, if you're only doing it for a season, um, let people know we're doing this for 13 weeks or, or, or 12 weeks. And um, then we have a break to allow you to really get into the content. But you establish the rules. But whatever you decide to do, you want to make sure that, um, you know, there's consistency. So I hope that is um valuable to you do you use audience surveys poll the audience for feedback instead of call to action at times i i haven't actually simon but i do know that there are um other podcasters that have done that what i have done though is is as as you're creating community one of the things that you can do is if you're sharing that show and that's one of the changes that's actually one of the changes that i'm seeing that you know uh, communities are now being built around the podcast uh, podcasts um and so what you can do is if you've got a facebook group you can then uh, and poll in there and, and ask people to give feedback in that but however you decide to use that that's fine in a poll that has a limited time frame this is one thing that i would consider if it has a limited time frame you may want to consider doing that in your group and maybe not on the actual episode itself. Because as you know, your podcast has an everlasting time, you know, a lifespan, if you will. Someone may not hear about it till months down the track. And so you want to keep whatever you're doing um, as evergreen. But if you do have a, a, a feedback, an audience survey that is ongoing, so consistently getting feedback that runs through maybe Google, you know, there's some great tools that do that. And you could certainly have that running in the background on an ongoing basis. Hope that uh, helps. Here's a good question. Do you think starting a podcast on Anchor for FM, it's a free platform and they post it everywhere our podcast is, or do you go with someone who has a big network where they'll be posting it? Great, great question. Um, now, I don't know. Someone gave me feedback to say that Anchor no longer um, advertises on podcast episodes. So here's what I would say, and I have said, even in the, the, the podcasting community here uh, in the Facebook group, is that some free podcast hosts, how are they monetizing their platform? How are they monetizing their platform? Because A, you don't want to be in a situation which I believe has happened once before. I can't recall the name of the platform, but they could no longer fund their platform. So they gave their podcasters warning to say, look, we're shutting down. 
or they, you know, they may sell their podcast hosting platform to a new purchaser and that new buyer, what rules are they going to change? Do you have to then take your content and then put it across to another podcast host? That's number one that you need to worry, think about, concern yourself about how are they monetizing their platform. One way that they do monetize their platform and a number of, of podcast, free podcast hosts do this, is the way they monetize is they take your content and they add advertising to it. They add advertising to it. Now, I'm not sure whether Anchor does that, you know, on an ongoing basis. They used to. But what concerns me with that is as someone who wants to build their thought leadership, as you're building a business, you're building your reputation. That's really what a brand is. Reputation, what people say and think about you and the conversations they have, um, you know, when you're not there. And so you're, you can build and enhance your brand, your reputation, and you can also, um, you know, not destroy it, but impact it negatively. And so I'm always careful about what messages, advertising, sponsorship, am I getting behind with my brand voice, my podcast? And if I don't have control over what advertising gets connected to my podcast, I haven't got control over that. So people who are listening to your podcast will naturally assume that you've authorized it because it's on your podcast. So just be mindful about that. Um, and so, as I said, don't for, for me, external sponsorships and advertising is not where I'm monetizing. I'm creating that system, that pipeline that nurtures listeners into leads and ultimately paying customers you know, as they continue to, to listen to the podcast and interact with me um, in the other social strategies and, and the way that we're reaching out to our community doing it that way. So I'd be mindful about that. Um, I've used Blueberry for as long as I can remember. Libsyn is another great host. I haven't used Libsyn myself, but I do know of some awesome podcasters that uh, recommend Libsyn. Um, so just be mindful of, of those free platforms. I hope that helps. Um, okay, so they said Anchor helps you to post to the platforms. I don't think they are a platform themselves. Okay, yeah, they, well, they, okay, all right, but but I think they just check their advertising um, is the way that they monetize. Blueberry will publish your podcast to a lot, lot of different um, platforms too. Once you publish with Blueberry, like my podcast, goes out to um, Spotify, um, Google Play, Stitcher, obviously Apple, um, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Pandora, oh, a whole other, whole other different platforms as well. You publish once and it goes out to multiple, multiple platforms. Can I repeat those? You know what? Best thing for you to do is um, go to industrythoughtleaderpodcast.com and you'll see all the different platforms. But all the platforms, um, obviously the most popular ones, Spotify, Apple, um, Google Play, the Android, um, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, tune in. Um, there's so many other ones as well because once you publish, your feed goes out to all of those different uh, platforms. Um, Spotify purchased Anchor and Gimlet for 340 million. Some good platform syndication. Yeah, absolutely, which is fabulous. So if you're on Spotify, then um, you, you obviously uh, there they'll publish to those other places too. Yeah, Pandora, P-A-N-D-O-R-A. -A. Fantastic. Thank you. Good, good, good. But you know what? It's You've got to find out who your ideal clients are. You know, we had a, um, a podcast host who said uh, we published and then said, oh, are you also on? Um, and there's so many of them. That's the thing connect with your audience and find out where they want to listen and then make sure that you also publish your podcast there um, as well to be heard. Um, what's the podcast app on your, your watch, your Apple watch? I can't recall the name. My mind has gone blank. But we, we published it there too because someone said, I want to listen to your podcast from my watch, my Apple watch. They're adding all of the time, adding all of the time, new pop podcast players. So, uh what, you know, um, what is working really well now, all of a sudden you'll have another 10 platforms that are being added to. Um, someone asks, we can choose one and stick to it or can we publish to all of those other places also? Why not? If you can spread your message out on a, on a wider platform, go ahead and do that. 
if it's you, can't, you create content once, why not share it across multiple platforms? Yep, iTunes, which is now called Apple Podcast, of course. Fantastic. Any other questions about um, what we've talked about today? I remember tomorrow I talk about the, um, the the three podcast profit models. These are the this is the strategy strategy and systems that I use uh, myself and that my clients are using and that what I'm teaching. So hopefully you will be here again tomorrow. Fantastic! All right, everyone. Just a reminder for those of you who are listening in via LinkedIn, via Apple, uh, Apple via um, Instagram, and via some of those other platforms other than inside our private Facebook group. We will be taking it inside the group um, tomorrow. So podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash intensive, podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash intensive um, to become part of this group. So I'm going to stop this on Insta and I will see you in the group tomorrow. And let's have a look. Can we use the same podcast name? I'm not sure when we are posting in other places uh, if you are talking about um, the podcast being shared to a lot of those other podcast players, then, yeah, you'll definitely use the same name. It will be the same name. hope that makes sense because those podcast players take the feed that you submit to them and that feed will, 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 will share the content, will share your podcast. So you don't need to change your name across all of those platforms. Hope that is answering that question. Fantastic. Good, good, good. All right. I'm going to go into the group. So just a reminder, if you want to be one of those spotlight um, coaching sessions winners, the one of two, um, leave your biggest aha somewhere in the comments below this video. Now, let me share what the code word is. I promise to share that. So today's code word is niche. So today's code word is niche. Go and DM me that. Don't leave that code word. Um, here in the open forum, but DM me and then we'll put your list, um, your name on the list. Obviously, we're compiling a list to see that you're sharing the code word each session. Um, share your biggest aha. And if you want to share a selfie across one of the platforms and tag me in it so that um, I can see you're taking action and doing all the work. All right, we'll see you same time tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you.